So we're talking about uh, TMJ imaging. Um, uh, TMJ imaging, one of the first uh, and most prevalent imaging uh, devices out there was a Panorex. And a Panorex uh, basically stood in the machine, uh, they're still around today, uh, the x-ray goes around you, um, but the problems with the Panorex, uh, while it was a good scouting tool, um, it took your, your jaw and it, it spread it out like this. Your teeth at the front were clear, but then as the arc of the jaw was different, than um, uh, the arc of the machine, what would happen is, is that it would distort the condyles of, of the mandible and also uh, flip or <laughs> reverse the, the, the pull. So what we thought was lateral pull is actually medial. So it actually gives you kind of a funhouse mirror uh, perspective uh, of the uh, condyles of uh, the mandible. Now, the interesting thing is it was a good screening tool for a condylar fracture, degenerative changes of the temporomandibular joint, but with bony overlay, sometimes what would happen, uh, you wouldn't be able to see the eminence would actually cover uh, the head of the condyle. Uh, so, um, uh, more prevalent that, that's actually replaced uh, the Panorex primarily is the cone beam uh, CT scan uh, or ICAT, and that um, is a three dimensional imaging. Uh, it gives you the neck, it gives you the jaw, temporomandibular joints, airway, teeth, skull, and sinuses. So we get a lot of data, a lot of information. Um, not great for soft tissue, you can get some sense of, of the soft tissue, but it has much less radiation than a medical uh, CT scan. And then uh, we've got TMJ MRI, if we want to look at the soft tissue, what the disc is doing, uh, is the disc adhered to the eminence uh, on opening and closing, what position is in swelling, and also the integrity of the bone. Any swelling in the bony tissue and necrosis that will get picked up on an MRI. Um, uh, more expensive, time consuming. Uh, we need to do this test if it changes our treatment plan in some way. And another uh, imaging uh, device that is starting to be used a little bit more, and we see more um, uh, research done on this, and that is diagnostic ultrasound. Diagnostic ultrasound for the temporomandibular joint um, hooks up to your, uh, your phone uh, if you have a system like this and it gives us uh, swelling, um, cortex of the bone, is it intact, any bone spurring, placement of the disc, and we can also look at movement in real time. Uh, so this is kind of a, uh, something to be uh, aware of for the future. We're going to be seeing more and more diagnostic ultrasound. You can do it right in the clinic and it's incredibly fast and no radiation.